Oh, welcome to the 1878 FM podcast. It's three again. Vitty, Vitty oh. is, Vitty's facing, I don't know whether he should be facing like a kangaroo court type thing, but he's definitely coming for a chat in an office, a serious <laughs> chat about his behaviour. Because mm. it's all right, you know, he's got a, oh, I've got a car podcast. Then he goes and works, yeah. and now he's selling a car. Mm. It all seems a bit I'm, carry to me. Do you know what's weird, buying though? a car next week, will he? He will be. No, it's weird, though, and I want Sam's input on this because he is a comedy genius who's, mm. who's going on tour. Mm. Um, unfortunately, the name of his tour sounds like a washed-up darts player. Mm. But... Um, <laughs> surely a washed-up, like, gladiator? No, something. no. Um... Where does that phrase come from? A kangaroo court. I don't know. Like what? Like we we say things and they have no meaning. Like no, when you take. A... I like to think someone went somewhere and well, Australia for Australia, a start. Yeah, Australia, yeah. and they stumbled upon like a Judge Judy, but the kangaroo version. Do you think they stumbled upon? Little wig on. Yeah, the wig. Should... And what happened was instead of getting sentenced, yeah. they just went full Queen's Queensbury rules. But do you think they took like they walked in on it? No kangaroo seen them. Because otherwise, they wouldn't have got out no, with the phrase. No. And they just looked in and they see on a bench and mm-hmm. they saw like kangaroos and wigs. And yeah. they, Your Honour. And mm-hmm. then they just slowly. They wouldn't have been talking Brit- British accent. But... Your Honour. <laughs> That's it. Um, <laughs> you know, took that a couple sounds of. like the end of Planet of the Apes, but like instead of apes, it's kangaroos, isn't it? Yeah, yeah exactly. The world, and they just took a couple. frankly terrifying. They I took a... thought it was down to the phrase, you know, uh, you say jump and we say how high. It's like. I was the Rage Against the Machine lyric in it, but I I just thought it was like something to do with basically like the rules don't apply and the 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 court just I don't know there's some kind of like the court are you saying kangaroos to... don't stick to rules? Kangaroos, kangaroos, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. Actually, you've jumped in there with a two footer, Sam, but I want to see. Ped's mind was going into those places where you have to let it flourish. Mm. He, he was Stop taking me a picture. Yeah. Well, I was thinking. I was thinking that, like, um, the, you know, the come peer from behind a rock, you know, yeah. you, you think you're picking... Air's rock. No, well, you can't call it Air's no, rock anymore, but I have no that. idea what it's, no, called, it's called, but the, I'll just call it The Rock. The Rock. Um, call it, yeah. Not the fella who's in, he was who's gradually getting in worse and worse films. No, he is in a Christmas film, so you'll be made Big up. Red. Big Red, yeah. You want to go and see that, are you? It's probably about Jürgen in stealth, isn't it? It's not going to be Jürgen. I bet you it is. I've heard, I've heard today... Oh, yeah. Just just as a sidebar. Oh, yeah. Because I was sat in here and it was quite quiet. I mean, kangaroo sidebar. I've been sat in here, it was quite quiet. I've heard Jürgen being criticised. Dismissed. Now. It's almost like, well, he done well, but he was holding up. But Arna's come in. Back. Slots come in. And what he's done is he's took us <laughs> to the <laughs> next <laughs> level already. Just 10 games. And the irony is, <clears throat> Arn Slot's head looks very much like a boulder that you would find in the Australian outback. I think you might so, be right. So you've walked past an, the iron slot mm. boulder and you've just got there and there's a court of kangaroos. Um, one's called Kylie, one's called Jason, one's called Stefan. All the names are available. You know, and he wants to make you feel good. He probably does. You know, probably and um, before you know it... A a, flaming a, glass a, there a, from a, a, Shiver, a, a rat that was hit by a nuclear bomb is uh, suddenly, you know, wants to fight the world. Have and, you ever uh, met a kangaroo? Or, like, being close to a kangaroo? Yeah, I don't mean absolutely. emotionally, but, like, mm. by geographically. So, Sam, it's not. I wasn't in Australia, but we were in uh, Florida in May or April, May, whenever it was, and we were in Bush Gardens, and we're walking through, and there was this... Uh, kangaroo section kind of thing to go and so we went in great mm. so I'm seeing some kangaroos they're great they're great to see and I'm filming one because it's getting moving around I'm like oh, look how bosh this is yeah and it literally walked through the f- there was a hole in the fence that I didn't <laughs> see no but it's there it's allowed like it, it hasn't they haven't like been cutting it with like on the stealth they're allowed to move around but I'm filming and Amy's next to me mm. my daughter and it come through the fence, yeah. so she screams, and I'm like, nearly drop me thing, because there's a cat. It just literally hops across and goes in the next pen and just gets off. I'm just like, <laughs> oh. But you know when you think, ah, oh, it's not coming anyway, yeah, it's yeah. in within, and then it goes right by your foot. Yeah. I mean, I almost stood in its foot, like... Yeah, you shouldn't have done Like that. the uh, the little baldy chef in London, him. Can't remember it his sounds name. like... Greg, whatever his name is. Almost sounds like um, the plot to escape to victory. <laughs> 
very it's similar. Kangaroo dressing up as something to escape. Yeah. Just got like a name tag on a bus garden. Saved the penalty in the last minute they're, they're from a Nazi as well. Never but chicken run. Yeah. In fact, you mentioned but, Wallace then. I thought you were talking about, you know, Ardman Animations, Wallace and Gromit. Oh, no, right. Sounds like a kind of, yeah, a terrible, mm. terrible premise for a film where a kangaroo has to dress up as another kangaroo to get away. Listen, maybe that's... every second we talk about kangaroos dressed up as chickens yeah. is 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 more, we just get it is over less with? seconds talking about ever. Should we just get it over with? Come on, <laughs> let's get it. Let's get the football section over with. Okay. Everton travelled down to the south coast against the team who has been absolutely terrible all season. Hadn't won a game, scored six goals, and Everton did what Everton can do, which was not turn up. Play poorly and can see the goal what 31 seconds after they should have scored mm. themselves. Only Evan can do that. Um Sam, I mean, it was grim, wasn't it? Let's be honest. It was a terrible performance and a terrible result. Yeah, it was awful, and I've been searching for the word to describe it. And the only way Shite is with, one of them. Is, well, there's plenty of words that I probably mm. wouldn't want to use for fear of your your YouTube uh, strike record being mm. uh, ruined. But diabolical is the word I'd use. Mm. It was diabolical. And it, it was, was compounded by the fact that the weeks before performance, mm. draw against Fulham, was also diabolical. So despite the fact we got a draw against Fulham, we, we spoke at length, didn't we, on, on the show last week about how bad that was and how mm. annoying that was. And going into this game, I was dead confident. I was dead mm. confident of a victory because Southampton are utterly, utterly dire, dreadful. And as the game progressed, I was watching the way Southampton were playing. And I just kept saying out loud, these are crap. These are crap. Mm. And I've been watching Everton for the last, you know, 30 odd years. So I know what crap it is. But these were like, so, like, so because Southampton, we gave them like fair enough, uh, you know, in tons of possession. They had tons of possession. They weren't doing much with it, but they were starting no. to creep into like slightly more dangerous areas. But then they like tackle themselves or they just give the ball away unnecessarily under no pressure. Mm. And I was just thinking, these these are here for the taking because these are absolutely dreadful. And as the game went on, it just became clear that that we weren't really pushing for it. We weren't trying to take them. Instead of just going at them and getting a goal, because probably one goal would have won it. But you get one goal, they probably would have fell to pieces anyway. And we just, we, we seem to be like holding on for the draw or trying to nick one on a set piece. And that is such a risky tactic to have against against anyone. But against the team where you should be going out and beating them, it was it was just dreadful. And I just, every time the manager came on the on the TV, I was just getting so angry just looking at his face. And it, it has got to that point now where I'm just like, I'm so sick of listening to his excuses. And his, I put it on Twitter, I said, like basically, Sean Dyke, he's, he's treating he's treating Everton like some insecure boyfriend. Like he's our boyfriend, and he's insecure because he knows we're better than what he's capable of, and he's talking us down all the time. And it's it's time for yeah, sure, Everton, and it's time for the fans as well to just kind of have a bit of confidence in in what we are and who we are and what we should be striving to to get to. Ped, I saw you you posted that John Moore's quote on yeah. social media, and it just it couldn't have been more apt. Because yeah. it's not about winning the league. It's not about getting in the Champions League. This is not about delusions of grandeur. This is just about the facts that we are better than what we're playing and the manager's got to take 99% of the rap for that. Yeah, that, that quote's my go-to. <laughs> That's my go-to signal. That's the bat signal. Um, <laughs> it is. It's the bat signal for me, that, that quote, because... Saturday, I had enough, mate. That was me. That's me. That done. Done. That's me done, mate. That was that was that was shameful. I did have a few messages. No, not no one thingy. Not giving you stick. Just old pets. Not happy. No, no. That was me. I'm 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 done, mate. I'm yeah. done. Um, held back for weeks. Um, just because, yeah, the results I've picked up, and um, you know, it's fair enough. At, uh, you know when when you you're picking up points and you you've got injuries and stuff, but I just thought like you mentioned there, Sam, on Saturday, the way we set up against the worst team in the Premier League is an absolute disgrace. Um, and once again, taking Dominic Carvalhoon off and then ending up with Michael Keane up front yeah, it's is it's that's embarrassing. I'm sorry, you can I know people you can throw people will throw words around at times and come up and you know say certain things. Um, 
about football and can go too far, you know. But Saturday really was. I felt really embarrassed by by what I was watching. I was watching a really um, just tepid side, just just wanting to play counter attack football against the team yet yeah, that we know keeps the ball, but. Very good. When the yeah, when the when we got the ball, we were a, we were abysmal, and and I I was just the 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 opportunity was there to really have a go with them, and that meant putting Beto front and Dom up front, and if that means going long, and then when I listened to him afterwards in the press conference, and I heard him say, "Oh well, we got Beto on, so we started putting crosses in and going long," I was just thinking, "Oh my God, you have not got a clue, mate. You have not got a clue." Dom you looked have... happy, didn't he? Dom looked happy, so didn't Jai. And Jai looked happy as he walked down the summer. Hmm. It's 60 minutes gone. Yeah. And you've got, you're bringing, you, and also he left Bamford out, which I think is just, a, I just can't, I can't have that. You can't have. I, someone left, the, I seen someone say it, and it's sort of basic thing, right? And when you look at it, not a chance on earth would Liverpool leave Van Dijk out. Not a chance on earth would Arsenal leave Saliba out. No. Not a chance on earth would any good side. Lead, leave their intelligent manager. Leave their most important player on the bench just because someone's had a good game. But I also think the fan base has to take some part of that with the shite and nonsense of singing Kino and stuff like that when he gets put up front. Got to put that to bed. That's nonsense. Got to put that that stuff to bed. Um, and we've all we've all done that one way or another in the past for some of our players. It's it's it's. Now what I what I saw on Saturday, it's not even about getting beat by Southampton. You can we can all get beat. We've seen Everton go down there loads of times and get beat. You can get beat in any game. But the way we just basically just allowed the, uh, the worst team in the league to just have the optimism to grow into a game of football, I found embarrassing. And I I honestly I, I looked at that game and just you knowing sometimes you watch a game of football and go, I don't know where our next point's coming from because you see mm. a performance so so bad that's how I felt on Saturday of course there'll be more points of course we'll we'll you know we've got <laughs> could go to West Ham and easily win with this team but I just thought that's not what I ever want to see my Everton team ever ever do and I put that down to the manager completely because it is down to the manager players don't want to play like that not a chance on earth Dom's so, yeah, face you mentioned you, Baz you mentioned mm. Dom's face when he came off I just mm. thought like the human face is capable of projecting so many emotions and mm-hmm. i think he looked how i felt i was like his face just said what are you what are you expecting us to do mm-hmm. like what do you want me to do what do you want mm-hmm. everyone else to do this this is nothing's joined up nothing's working and he just he, i mean i feel sorry for the lad at the moment because he's he's being put up front and there's just there's nothing nothing being given to him at all he's and he's, on I don't know what he's expected to do he's living on scraps they're, they're not there's just, I don't know. I, 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 again, listen, everyone sees football differently, don't they? But I just watch us and think that it's almost like taking the piss out of us. Mm. It's the, I, you know, we have discussions with people. Some people think this is, this team is, this is the worst team in the league. They can't do any better and he's doing a good job to get your points. That to me is nonsense, absolute mm. nonsense. Just my opinion. This team with a with a decent coach and a more attacking coach would be halfway up the league. You know, Everton could have gone above United. Not that it matters in its early days, but they could have gone above United. They did the one strategy. You know, I watched after our game. I was doing editing the videos and I had Wolves and Palace on. Neither of those teams were very good, but you know what? They were they were both flying forward. Mm. The both fullbacks from either team were in the box all yeah. the time, and I look at ours. And ours are on. I mean, both fullbacks were at fault for the goal, like the winning goal, but I just look at ours and we just don't go forward. We can't get forward because the way we play. Mm. And yet you think, if you drill it down to just basic, what is the plan? Mm. There isn't a plan no. because we don't have anyone around Dominic calvert when we knock it long. The wingers aren't high enough to receive the yeah, ball. The fullbacks and if they are high... There's a big 40-yard gap yeah. between the fullbacks, so therefore it's easy to get in round, so your fullbacks will be frightened to go forward. The midfield's trying to do everything, because nothing's happened. Dwight McNeil was shocking on Saturday, and he was injured, you could tell. Mm-hmm. He wasn't fit, he was hardly in the game, really poor. So that was another man out the, the mm-hmm. position, another man out the game, because 
he's reverting to type. But the cannot, the biggest thing, all that being said, your biggest thing, well, sorry, two big fucking red flags to me and a part of my language was taking off your striker to just replace him with another striker is bonkers against the team at the bottom of the table mm. who are there for the team. They were, without being too disrespectful to them, they are a very poor side. The quality they've got is low. That Cameron Archer is shite. I've said it all along. He's a championship striker, and yet we had him. Adam Armstrong, a championship striker. And this fella's playing as if we're playing Real Madrid, and it's Vinny Jr. and Mbappe. That's, he's terrified of anything. To take your centre forward off is embarrassing. The second thing... Your big tactic is to put your £75 million centre-back on with three or four minutes left to put a centre-back up front. It, that, to me, is any Everton fan, if you know anything about our football club, should be just going, oh, my God, what is happening here? What is happening? You might do it once in a season in a game at home where you're throwing everything and you're looking for something. We've done it two weeks on though. It's embarrassing. Mm. And I'm, I just watch it and just think, nah, if we had a manager who was like, let's have a go at teams. Let's have a go. You know, I understand you might drill down the last 10 games of the season if you're scrapping mm. for points. It's November. We should November, be going yeah. after teams because if we went after teams, we'd almost be out of, out of any relegation threat mm. at all. But what we're doing is we are allowing someone to tell us Mm. That it's really difficult. It's we're in a relegation battle, and that's just the best we can hope for. And we've played ourselves into a position where, if we're not careful, we absolutely will be in a relegation battle. Yeah. And mm. I have no confidence whatsoever that we will go to West Ham and do anything this weekend because we will go no. and sit back again. And they have got players who can hurt you. Where Southampton had no one who could hurt us, and we still couldn't win. And then the mood changes, doesn't it? Once you get sucked down into that bottom, you know, not necessarily the bottom three, but in that in that mm -hmm. mix, then all mm -hmm. of a sudden the mood changes, the confidence dissipates. Yeah, yeah. And all, and you've got no momentum, and then everything becomes more difficult. And that's probably when Sean Dyche goes, "Right, lads, this is where we belong." And and that, you know, deep down, yeah. probably that's what he yearns for. But I'm going to ask you a question, and it might sound facetious, but it's not mm -hmm. meant to be. It's a genuine question. Do you honestly think if Sean Dyche and this Everton team set up by Sean Dice played against, for example, an under eight Sunday League team. Do you think he would play any differently? Because I don't think he would. I don't think he knows how to play differently. He'd still be defending, giving them possession and just playing aimless balls. Obviously, high balls against eight-year-olds should be a bit more effective. But they should can't hit the ball. Not allowed to they're not the allowed ball. to so, let the ball. So, so they're not allowed. We'll no, we'll have no. to move it we to, are. say, under 14s or something. Okay. I'd nope. be confident my kid's side would keep Everton out for at least half an hour. <laughs> I mean, that's grim, isn't it? That because, is grim. Because all you'd say to your keeper is, come to the edge of your box, because they're just going to whack it. So, there's no clip, there's no plan. I love the fact how seriously you're taking the I am idea of Everton playing them. I am, I'm <laughs> taking it seriously because it wouldn't take much to break this team down. Because we are, what we're saying is, these players aren't good enough. <laughs> Luca Dean literally left because the last manager who done what this fella's doing told them they weren't good enough. And Luca Dean put so many posts up saying, it's nonsense, this. Mm. It's nonsense that we, we say we're not good enough, so we just kick it high. Mm. That's not football in 2024. Yeah. I seen a thing yesterday on Twitter. Can we have to beat us with that long throw? I seen, um, I seen, I seen uh, like a European... I don't know, journalist yesterday saying like how did Villa get Onana like how mm. did they manage to get Onana like be ahead of easy no no I'm saying how did they get yeah. get him ahead of so many other better clubs well Arsenal should have got him do you know what I mean they were like and yet this he was a player that he had no he didn't, want him. didn't have any time and for bemoaned him leaving and then yeah, bleats about, about, bleat, bleat about yeah. him leaving but I would, I've said it before, right, Sam? I'd have no issue with the manager. Well, I would. But I'd have much less of an issue with the manager. If he if he truly believes that this mm -hmm. team isn't very good, and I, he's had 12 new players, so I, I think he's, again, I don't know what he wants, but if he just went, we're playing four foot and going long, I'd go, Sam, that's what the we are. Just kick it long. That's what we are. Let's mm -hmm. get the bits. Let's no, get the second ball. Interesting, right? 
and listen, we're looking through blue tinted lenses here, but surely this team is better than any team we had at Burnley. Miles better. Like, miles better. It's got to be, hasn't it? Miles and better. And yeah, at Burnley, he played 4 4 2. He had a striker, split strikers. So we had the big striker and the one off. Yeah, but he also at times had Ashley Barnes no, and Chris Wood. No, but that's what I'm two saying. But that, but what I'm saying is they had, he had two strikers. Well, Chris Wood is doing Two good. strikers. Mm. And he knew how he worked them. And, and yet he's come here. And of course, he relied on the, the, the Corey for mm. a long time to be that split striker. Mm. But now he's got, like, whether you like him or not, he's got Beto, who's coming on with all that enthusiasm. Mm. Okay, I don't. I still don't think he can start games. What a goal! By playing the way. this way, yeah, it was a great goal, wasn't it? And and that that's the maddest thing about the game. wasn't I wasn't one tiny bit angry about that VAR decision. No, I no. was not at all so, like bothered by it. Like, do you know what I mean? But I was so angry about the game that I wasn't angry about mm, the goal. Mm, I yeah, was just like, same. oh well, that's he's what happened. He's off, isn't he? Yeah, that's what I, that's that was me feeling. Um, but you've got to play. So I just no, I can't get past. I just can't get past this idea of you've got two strikers and you're not even prepared to play them together for 10 minutes to see what happens, to see what kind of drama it causes. And yet you are prepared to put a centre-back up front. That is the most embarrassing thing or one of the most embarrassing things I've ever seen as an Everton fan watching a team. I I find that just hugely, hugely embarrassing and, and, and just... Costly as well, costly to the yeah. whole thing. Like just continually hitting yourself in the leg, and then going on oh, <laughs> legs hurting. No, but it is. It's because which this is all self inflicted. Mm. It's all self inflicted. Well, yeah. If we'd have gone out He's... and had a go at every team, mm. and we were we were where we are, you could turn around and go, you know what? We tried, haven't yeah. we? We tried to go at teams, and we just what do we need to do? I said on my match action at the weekend. I don't mind them, you know, being having an inferiority complex against like the big six, if you like. Mm. Right? If he just believes that they're better, and they are better team, of course, they're better than Everton. I, I get that. You sort of play cautiously. I have no issue with that. But this league is is poor. I've said it before. It's not difficult to finish halfway up in this league. Mm. As Everton proved it last season, despite winning four games, we're not winning for four months. Mm. We still. With without points deductions, would have finished tenth or eleventh. So therefore, go after teams. Then there's three teams. Leicester City will go down. Don't care what anyone says. The crap. They've got ten points at the moment. They're on that thing of oh things are going for them. They haven't played. When they start playing better teams, they will lose games and all that. The bottom three will struggle to stay up, and Wolves are in there because they can't do anything. Can't hang on to anything. Right, so already you're almost getting a pass going, and Palace aren't great. Mm. So you're going, well, all right, well, the six of us then save Everton are in there, and I still believe the teams like Brentford, who, who have got loads of goals in them, but they're not amazing. Teams like that, Fulham, we saw last week, play nice footy, they're not amazing. You know, there's all of these teams we can we can buffer in amongst. But if you keep throwing games away by, by being terrified of mm. the opposition... You just soon find yourself in a four four way battle to yeah. stay up because you've thrown all of the points away when you should have gone after teams. If we'd have gone after Southampton on Saturday, four two four, really gone for it, we'd still have exactly the same points today as what we had on Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. By going, we lost the game, so it wouldn't have made any difference. Only we would have really thrown, and you'd have gone. Yeah. You know what? Fair play to the manager. He threw everything at that, and it was one of them yeah. days where you could look and go. Better on Calvert Loon have got to be doing better, or Lindstrom, or ha- whoever it may be. You've got to be looking, going, they should have done better. That's not on really on the manager because he's tried everything. But I just finished that game and felt like you didn't try anything, yeah. mate. You tried something with Michael Keane with three minutes left or something. That was your that was your big big finale, Michael Keane up front. Yeah. And that's not having a go with Michael Keane. The lad missed an absolute sitter, by the way, but. Uh, so that's why I'm angry mm. because we haven't thrown a punch on anyone, but we're still losing games and not winning. Yeah. Sam, well, there's risk averse and then there's risk averse, and if you're so scared of taking any minor risks, then you're never going to get anywhere, and you end up, like you say, punching yourself in the leg and your leg hurts. I mean, mm. the, he's that risk averse. He doesn't want to bring a second striker on, but the, we end up with the second striker at the end of the last two games anyway. In Michael Keane, 
Yeah. We know he's got a good finish in him a couple of times a season, but he's not, he doesn't know what he's doing, does he? And it's like it, the whole system is not that we know what the system really is, but the ends, it's just this panic. You know, you get into injury time, it's just this panic balls up, which is just aimless and pointless. And he's just so risk averse. And I, I don't know whether that is because he's got the, the possibly the best squad he's, he's ever had as a manager and he doesn't know what to do with it. And he's just sort of like retreated into his shell. But He's that risk of it. He probably eats pizza with a knife and fork, doesn't he, Sean Dice? Because he doesn't want to get any <laughs> I, sauce down his front. I'll be honest, probably... I have a pizza from time to time the night before. Oh, well, okay, but fair there enough. You yeah, but, but, I, but I, would, areas, Baz, I, I you know, would, mate. So. And I'd be definitely yeah. playing 4-4-2 four, four, or 4-3-4. Four, four. I mean, Brighton play 4-4-2. Four, four, Arsenal play 4-4-2 four, four, at the moment. Not hearing anyone going, oh, it's outdated. We've got two big lads who would be a handful for anyone. Mm. You could almost play 4-2-4. No one is breaking with seven men against Everton. Nobody. We don't push our full-backs up. That's what I'm saying. So 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 you're never getting stretched. It's not an issue, is it? You're never getting stretched. You've got six men back. What team breaking with seven players? Nobody. Unless it's Man City and against City, you'd never play 4-2-4 anyway. I, I just... I, I just think he hasn't got a clue. Genuinely, no. what? Do you like, think... I genuinely look at him on the sideline, and I don't think he's got a clue. I honestly do. Is it just that he's clear? And, and you know what? Right? No, no. Let me just go on. right. Yeah, go on. Go on. Of course, right. We have to be sort of careful what we say about on here. And that's why I don't just go on every single week after we lose or whatever have mm. bad results and just throw round words like because you have to be very careful what you say because it everything lasts forever on the internet, right? But I'm at that point now where I don't care if we win on Sunday, uh, Saturday or whatever, and then we and then we come back and beat Brentford. This fella needs to go. He is destroying, helping destroy. Sorry, anything good in this football club. Where like just like there's an opportunity coming up on the horizon for Everton Football Club. And we're all waiting, but I just can't watch this. Well, I mean, I have to watch it, mm. but. <clears throat> <laughs> I literally have to watch it. I am, I am. This fella is killing me. What, what I was, and, and I know, I just, no, but I'm not being. And I said this on Saturday, right? We can throw round words. We can be uh, outrageous. We can be clickbaity all we want. This, I don't do that. I've never done that. I, I've all. It's you all. It's always come from in there mm. as an Evertonian. Mm. It always heart, you know. My heart do, it doesn't just. Yeah. It's on the sleeve. Your it's heart. just I, I. The head never comes into it with me. Everyone knows that, but I am careful about what I say because I know words have consequences. Oh, but, we... but this fella now, honestly, I cannot watch that. I can. He got out of jail last week, mm. and this week is one of the most honestly, just cowardly performances mm. I have ever watched in my life, and I am I am embarrassed. For him, take take that tacky off. Put your suit back on, mate, because you don't deserve that badge to be wearing that badge. I I think I'm embarrassed by it. I think we what again? We are. I am careful on it simply because I don't think, and I get stick for it. I we, I got loads of stick for not coming on and demanding him to be sacked. Mm. People are saying to me, "You should be screaming for him to be sacked." I'm never coming on here demanding for managers to be sacked. They don't need any pressure added on to them. They've got it themselves. Mm. But it doesn't mean I have to come on here and be happy with what I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah. I want Sean Dyche to grow a pair of balls and attack teams. That's what I'm asking for. I'm not sitting here going, sack him today. I want a manager to realise that we're Everton Football Club. I'm not deluded. Mm. I know what this squad... I'm not saying go the Etihad and play four up front. Of course I'm not, because I understand the capabilities of this side. But I also know that this team, squad, is much better than what it's doing. I'd rather a team be in our position going after teams mm. than be in our position for being shit houses. But mm. that's, part of the, yeah. that's part of the reason, though, why I can't get on board with anything he does. It's because... Like and and Sam said it before, we said it loads of times. He has dumbed us down to mm. believe that this team is worse than it is, mm. and I just don't believe that. And, and a lot of people know mm. that I have I have in the past said that I believe the team is worse than than the manager, and therefore. Mm. 
But with this team, I think it improved in the summer. Mm. It got 48 points last season, and I think it should be doing a lot better than it is. Mm. And I watch other teams go for it in the Premier League. And of course, not every single game do you go for it. Mm. But you stick your chest out and you go, we're better than you, and therefore we're gonna we're gonna do something. And just just even something like that one sub, just that one sub, sack oh, well, he didn't do very well today. And then saying we're gonna put more crosses in for Beto. No, mate. That's a major what about we almost got a point. <laughs> we were playing Southampton. What yeah. do you mean you almost got a what at the bottom club? Yeah. Oh, well done. Yeah. Well done, mate. You know, that you just the whole the whole gaslit like situation i know that's kind of a relatively recent word that we use in, in you know modern culture but it's totally true of how he talks about the club and the team and the chances of the team and i wonder because i know you've mentioned it quite a lot on on the channel and i've had it with a couple of things i put on twitter over the weekend after the game i had people agreeing with me and then people really disagreeing with with me mm -hmm. everton fans saying one guy was saying, like, well, where would what players from this squad would get into the Leicester squad? And I was thinking, I mean, quite a lot, to be honest. All of them, quite probably, a lot. Mate. So, I, you know, I don't know what kind of point that was making, but obviously that's a legitimate point of view that people now have because he's mm. gaslit some of the he's told crowd, it. some of the fans. Now, if he's gaslit some of the fans, there's certainly going to be people who work at the club who've been gaslit into thinking, mm. well, he's doing a wonder job here, isn't he? He's working miracles. Director of and football I'm, for a start. I, I, it was, yeah. But how many of the players as well does that seep into even subconsciously just a little bit and therefore the whole the whole level of, of performance kind of drops a little bit. So it just it's really it's really poisonous. And maybe he doesn't even know he's doing it. Maybe he's gaslit himself. Maybe he just thinks I normally work with crap teams and therefore this is a crap team and I'm working with them and you know, sixteenth will be amazing. But that's that's not where I see it from at all. Hmm. No, agree. Yeah. Agree. You, it, it's a it's a philosophy, isn't it? And it and it does. I think it's seeped. I think he's it's seeped into the club. And you're right. What does is he does he tell them something completely different? But why why aren't you? Why are you telling your fans that actually this team isn't very good? And why are you telling your fans that the club's a mess and you don't know what what I've got to put up with? And you don't know what the what it was like when I got here, and it was a lot worse than I was told, and all this kind of thing. Why are you telling people that? Why? Why? What advantage is it to anybody to tell the world what a mess the football club is in or was in? Or it doesn't the, benefit the, anyone. It, it, well, it benefits him, doesn't it? Or Except he's him. the only yeah. person. It protects him. It protects him from anyone saying you're doing a bad job. It protects him. If anyone's looking at him going, he could be our next manager. Because the his line has been for some time now, you don't know how bad I've got it. And I just don't understand. And it has permeated. And we know that for a fact. You know, stay up, get to the new stadium. Stay up, get to the new stadium. That's the club mantra this season. And I, I just, I'm, just can't go along with that. I just can't go along with that. Having... Because it, it 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 it's there's no ambition there, and then if there's no ambition there. Then, then the ambition is to finish one place above the relegation zone. And if you fall below that standard, then you're getting relegated. And I just yeah, I don't know how that can be allowed. Whereas people like Neville Southall say you aim for first, and then if you drop below it, you're second. You don't mm -hmm. aim for tenth, and then if you drop below that, you're eleventh. And now suddenly we're saying it's anything but relegation. And all you've got to do is miss that by one place. And it's it's catastrophic. And I just can't get behind that way of thinking. I really can't. Because mm. it is now. It's seeped into the football club. Ah, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. Yeah. You know, ah, we'll yeah. be all right. We're better than them. We're better than them. It only... We've played. You know, you look at the teams we've played at home. We've played nobody. We've played nobody. And we look at the fixture list now. And people are suddenly going... Now's the realization of going, hang on, we've only got nine points. And you look at the from fixtures now and you go, hang on. And also, yeah, from 10 games. So his own personal, personal 
standards of the low low standards are he should have 13 points. So he's already four points behind his own personal. Can I just point out tally? as well that his 1.3 a game isn't that Everton either. No, I know. It's way below. He's close no, to Walker now on the But he was appointed he was appointed on his 1.3. Get 1.3 and we'll be fine. Mm. Well he's four points behind that. And we go into now a run of West Ham away. Brentford at home, Manchester United away, and then yeah, look away from the rest of those from the rest of those fixtures. Okay, Wolves, Wolves at home, but then suddenly Wolves who are starting to stare a little bit, that becomes a six pointer, and then yeah, go and have a look at the rest of those fixtures after that. Till you know, people were like, oh, we got Forest. Yeah, have a look at Forest now. Who, by the way, they didn't yeah. come into the season going, let's just stay up, lads. We'll be all right. No, they came out and they went right. We're putting puffing our chest out, putting our shoulders back, and we're having a go. And to me, I I just can't have this anymore. I just can't have it. And yeah, it's it's just gone beyond gone beyond. My that. other thing as well is the players have got to start stepping up. As yeah, well. forget about even if you don't like playing for them and some of them and what you get. The room is that are bouncing around. That was quite a few have had enough. Don't know whether they're real or they're not, but they're certainly doing the rounds. And I was that you've still got to when you cross the white line, go and do your own mm-hmm. game. Well, ignore them and get on with it. Or are you doing what other players have done at other clubs, which is underperform? So the club mm-hmm. has to make a decision. I don't know, but that was a shocking, shocking yeah. performance and results. And it was rubbish against Fulham. It was one of the worst games I've seen since the Walker days, that Fulham game. I thought you were going to say since the war then. i never seen anything. <laughs> no, I know, but it's just the way you set it up. I was like, sure, in the war. <laughs> you know, so I've been told. Um, yeah, absolutely diabolical. Eating gruel and is, West is more away. preferable. West Ham away is not a good game either. And you're right, you know, could go there and nick a 1-0 or something, but they have got talent in the final mm. third. Where If you don't get that defensive side right, you know, then what we'd have nine points after eleven games. It's just, it's a stark kind of little jolt of reality where because it's been such a gradual mm. decline for Everton over the last you know thirty years. Mm. But that idea that we appoint a manager on the basis that he's going to get us one point three points per game, which is fun. grim anyway. But he, mm. and he can't even do that. So you're like, oh god, we have just slid. And because it, it's been thirty years, it's kind of it's hard to. It's hard to really feel it, isn't it? Sometimes because it's been so gradual with little glimmers of hope along the way. But it's just like the situation that we're in. And it just, yeah, it's just, if he would have, if he would have just coasted us to a, a nice mid table finish, I could have put up with crap football till we get to the new stadium. But as it is, I'm just, I'm, I'm in agreement with Ped where it's just, it's time to, it's time to get someone else in. Surely to God's but who's going to do that? We don't know. Oh, well. Oh, well. Shouldn't be Never mind. Maybe Christmas. Um, anything you want to discuss? That's enough football. I, I'm, I'm, I can't get past kangaroos in court. <laughs> well, I put some... I asked ChatGPT for some questions to discuss. So this is well, what I come up with. So we'll take a couple all of that, these. All that AIs are available. They are, but I've just used that one. Uh, if you could have Do the they a- know what the AIs are available? Are I they that clever? They must know. Good mustn't. question for them, that wouldn't it? That is a good mm. question. What other AI I might ask them? Wouldn't it? Uh, if you could have any animal as a sidekick, what would it be and why? But let's take dogs out because we'd all yeah, have a yeah. dog, wouldn't we? Because yeah. dogs are the best. So if you could have any other animal as a sidekick, what would you have? Kangaroo. Would that come into it? No. You look after you, the big, aren't they? Big I know, but you don't know how loyal they'll be, though. No, no they're not going to be trustworthy, are they? And if they stand up to you, you're in trouble, aren't you? Really. And they'd be, yeah, they can throw digs and, and them claws. Giving your neighbours spoilers as well, because they're only <laughs> six months ahead. Is that still oh, a thing? <laughs> Are they still six months behind on him? Um, or are they catching up now because they finished and come back? I think we must be caught up now. <laughs> I remember someone going to Australia when I was a kid and bringing back a VHS tape of some neighbours episodes, and it was literally like looking into the future and seeing the future. It was unbelievable. 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 Hey, Baz, I'd have a I'd have a honey badger. Mm. Yeah, they're hard. Yeah. They are just psychos. They are psychos. Could you trust it though? No. Are these animals like are these like um the actual animals or are we talking like you know sort of cartoon form? No, I think animals. Let's, let's stick to real animals. <laughs> because no, but but the problem is the real animals that 
they are animals. Yeah, it's... but they can they can talk and that. They're gonna. You... So that's cartoon, basically. Then isn't that sort no, of? But if we go cartoon. No, what I mean is that what, what's it called? Anima. Animatronics. No, that's not. That's a completely different a thing, different, isn't it? No, I yeah. don't know what are you saying. Animaphonic, isn't it? What, what's the word? Do someone will know the word. It's like when you. It's basically when you Disney fire an oh, animal, okay. you know, and make it, and it has I'll a hu- it has it. human uh, elements. Okay. So it's okay. like you know what you would see in a cartoon. Basically, what I'm saying. Okay. So so what would you do? So basically, like Basil, the greatest detective. You know that kind of thing. Okay. I I tell you what I'd have. Because I think it's a great word. Hmm. I'd have a shrew. A shrew. Yeah. It's a great word, isn't it? I don't could even you, know what you have tamed it first. I've heard the word. You wouldn't what have to tame it because it is, it is uh, like, I don't know how version. So basically, you'd probably walk in with like a deer stalker hat on mm. and, um, you know, tweed, a lot of tweed. So what you've pitching yourself as a detective now with a sidekick? Well, that, I mean, if you're going to gonna have a sidekick, you might as well be a detective. Oh, so, you know, that's that's the general premise of, okay. of being of being having a sidekick. All right. What, 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 How about what, a mosquito? Have a mosquito, and that could oh. like fly into like secret locations and get blood samples from suspects. Tiny though, aren't they? But again, why would you need blood samples? What are you doing in life? What, what's I, yours? Hypothetically, if you're a detective, you might need to nail someone. You might need to finger someone, as it were, for the case. <laughs> nail so, and finger case, someone. I don't know whether actually, that would land you, you in the ethics someone? court, Sam. What's what 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 kind of detective are you? I don't know. I'm a hardball detective, Pat. Army detective. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play I'm by a the detec- rules. I'm a detective with a couch. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a joke. Some people get that joke. Right, some people. So you've won't. gone for a shrew. A shrew, and yeah. Sam has gone for a mosquito. Yeah. Are you sticking uh, with no, that? I, I- no, I'm going to say honey badger. Still, still. Oh, the honey badger. So you you don't yeah. care if it might go mm. off its head. I think what I have to do is make sure I read it from birth so that it trusted me implicitly and we, we shared some fun times together before yeah. and then steered it towards this life of crime or okay. crime salt. Well, no, you'd be crime salt unless... Um, listen, yeah. it could be... You could be the wet badges or whatever the wet they're called. Badges. <laughs> the wet bandits, obviously. That sounds like a could. euphemism. No, but if he, he said read it first before yeah. a life of crime, didn't he? And then he went, oh, yeah. or him. So, it, yeah, not necessarily meaning you have to solve crime. Mm. Sam could be committing crimes with the honey well, badger. maybe I'm, I could be Ped's arch nemesis, couldn't I? Me yeah. the honey badger. Yeah. Mm. And uh, Ped and his uh, shrew. Yeah. You could be the Moriarty to Ped's homes. It's it feels that way. Slam main event that no one asked for. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Absolutely yeah. feels that yeah. way. You're halfway there with Thunderstorm. Um, what's the weirdest smell you actually like? The weirdest smell? My own farts, let's be no, honest. No, Sam, no. He's gone there, no. I'd, I'd have I'm to... I'm sorry, ag- but... You would have thought by now, up. right, and I'm, I'm moving off that, but you would have thought by now, somebody out there, and maybe this is one for Dave Vitti and his gang, would have found a way to put the smell of petrol mm. in a deodorant. In a deodorant. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the smell of petrol. Yeah, that, that little whiff of, of petrol that mm. you get when you just get out your car on the forecourt and then mm. you look at the price and go, fucking hell. Um... <laughs> Is 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 tremendous. I mean, you can't like it's not a smell that that you you can take for too long. No, it's just that initial little whiff you of it. Want to inhale that all the time? No, it? it's like very much like walking into your mum and dad's house on Christmas Day and just getting that smell of the turkey, mm. you know, or or whatever. You, whatever. Why you want to inhale that for longer though? I know, but it's just getting that like first. I know what smell, you mean. The initial, just getting that initial, initial whiff, initial, isn't it? The initial buzz of that petroleum. A buzz, buzz, yeah. Mm. I, I also, on a similar vein, the a freshly tarmacked fence. Do you like tarmac that? Tarmacked fence? Three so, you yeah. mean? Tarmac? Who's tarmacking up? Tarmac oh, yeah. fence. Where the hell do you live, Sam? Yeah, You're tarmacking fences. <laughs> tarmac. Have you got 90-year-old Joe tarmacking your bleeding fences now as well? Putting your bins out. <laughs> Poor fella. I said, dude, that's what nice. Is so then? Is Creosote so similar to tarmac? Well, Creosote's so kind of... the smell, but it's very much what you put on your wooden fences. Yeah. That's the one I meant then. Yeah, Am I okay. not wooden fences? Because you can't clear so you well, you, mean, you probably can, but clear so you drive instead of tarmac. Mm, very interesting. Very, very strange. Now and again, I I I catch you sniffing a a a, a felt tip pen. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> the RCRs. Yeah. Just a very just the but again, very much like the pet. Just now and again. Just like you've ever, you've ever, you ever see a show them. and you go, "What's coming on with Baz today?" Wow. He probably had to write something mm. five minutes before the show, yeah. and yeah. he's still, he's still in the the sharpie zone. I sometimes do it just to get away from what Ned said to me 
have to have to go to a Who? different play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Is that when everyone's Ooh. watching your videos going, why is Baz on 0.5 speed? And it's like, mm. well, he had the green Sharpie <laughs> pen. Sharpie. His right nostril. Like that. <laughs> Ooh. We'll have to ban Sharpie. Oh, no, we've already done that. Is there something like um, you ever smell and you think... It's like, you ever get that smell? Like, have you ever walked into, like, certain, like... Um, so places and it just it almost feels like you want to eat them that's how nice the smell is yeah, and then like, you're gutted like lush type things you're gutted lush, because you know it is that. soap and you're like oh, there was one in um years ago in the grand floridian we were in mm -hmm. all on. no no we mm. go in can't you but we went in and it was a, it was like it looked like a sweet shop oh yeah all the things it was like oh my god this is amazing yeah. went up the smell of like yeah. strawberry and all that it was so no beds a bit disappointed. absolute disappointed. no beds but the smell was unbelievable no beds and it felt as though you just wanted to get someone yeah. start eating it it, it was shut so down the no beds this is, you know the way smells have this ability to just take you back to a certain time in yeah, your life. Yeah, like, yeah I think more than anything like even more than music like a, the right smell that you haven't smelled for years there's mm -hmm. one in particular which is the aftershave cool waters, which reminds oh. me of a camping trip in the year 2000 with two of my best mates. And we went down to Newquay and yeah. we didn't have any money because we were dead young and, and clueless. And mm. the, you know, those little samples that yeah. you get with like a magazine, we had the load left over from like someone worked in a shop and he just, so we just brought all these little samples. We just doused ourselves in it every night, like proper biffs and we stank of cool water. And at the time it was, it was audible. When nice I get smell. a whiff of cool water yeah. now, I go, ooh. So it's it a nice little right smell, cool water. Beautiful. And you used it to haul yourself out for food. I, I felt like that's where he was going. It, 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 feels, it feels like, like, like that's where you were going with that, that story. It was like you, you emphasised that you didn't have any money, but you had cool water. So therefore, in my mind, it was just like, I'm a gigolo man. Because <laughs> we need to make ends meet. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Flip, I ain't paying us anymore. <laughs> the um, cigars always remind me of the Bullens as a kid going oh, in yeah. the match. Yeah, As a young kid. That's because they're mm. in a wooden wood stand. Just have fellas smoking cigars as you do. Play. Where there's Whatever. wood. Um, let's do a couple more of these. If you could only eat one colour food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ooh, so, beige. So, beige, beige, because it is tasty. You're in the war. For you. mm. Sausage rolls and that. You ever get any blue food? Do you? But you get yeah. raspberry, you get, well, sorry, I'm not raspberry, blueberries, blueberries I mean, quite please. literally. Like, in the name. They've got the Monopoly, haven't they, mm. on food, you'd mm. think. Mm. Trying to think. Blue cheese. Mm, that's it's not really that... blue, is it? It's just got mm. blue bits in it. Yeah, that's just mould, essentially. Well, yeah, but if you, you could choose, yeah. I suppose, to eat just I'm going to go with brown. Chocolate. Just Lots chocolate. of options. Bread, rice. <laughs> But yeah, there you go. Healthy and not healthy. You get a good balance. You're in the mix. Coca Cola. You get in the mix. Is it you brown in it? Yeah, yeah. rolls as well. Exactly. Exactly. Stuff in the oven a bit. Longer. I think brown is the colour. Yeah. That's probably the colour. Fair play. For everything. Football is okay. the game. I mean, what about this one? Would you rather have the ability to talk to plants or animals? Why would you want to talk to a plant? <laughs> Knowledgeable. Knowledgeable. Are they? Aren't There's they? no evidence they're knowledgeable. Nah, they're knowledgeable. They might plants. be like, and they probably see a lot. Because mm. people don't expect them to, whereas mm. an animal might duck and die. It's got its own shit going on, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Where a plant yeah, is it, just sat there watching. Imagine talking to a tree and everyone's like, this tree is so wise, it's been there for 600 mm. years. And mm. the tree's like, yeah, but I, I, I'm facing the wrong way and I'm stuck in a field. I've seen none. <laughs> I'm been <mates."> anywhere, lad. <laughs> you on about? I've heard some stuff, but I couldn't tell you if it was real. I, no, but the, the thing about plants and trees is, like, you know, if you want to take it back, is they are all connected, aren't they, through a root system? Yeah. So surely. They should know what's going on. I mean, this is a bit. This is going to be Avatar, isn't it? Yeah, they yeah. should know what's going on around mm. them, and they've been there. You know, like hang on. You ask them a question, they go, "Hang on, I'll just find out." And they just stand there, and don't do anything. And go, yeah, Dave, <laughs> Dave down there, Dave's down there. He's a tree on the corner there. He just said to me, "Yeah, he's yeah, he's seen your dog." Oh, not Dave the, not Dave the oak tree. He's full of shit. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. He's full of yeah. Don't they call it the they call it the World Wide Wood? Don't they? There the, you or, go. Like the fact See? all all the. Uh, do everything's that, everything's connected. So it's the hint of web. Yeah. Everything um, is connected. So I'd go trees. Okay. But because animals, like you know, some of them are a bit off the head, aren't they? Mm, and some yeah. of them are lying pretty Some as are well. liars, and if they, you get a cats are knobheads, so they're all right. Cats, ah, they're knobheads. There's, like... there's a knobhead element. Don't get me wrong. There's an aloofness about them which you just can't trust them, but they are good as well. Um, all right, last one. If you could swap voices with anyone for a day, who would it be? 
Would any of us swap with the artist formerly known as Ned? To just that, have a voice like that, that for a day. Hello. <laughs> Can I sell you a bank account? Can um, I give you a MacBook for nothing? Well, it wasn't even a Mac. <laughs> give you an iMac for nothing. Uh, if I could swap. Do you know what? That's a good question. I'd, um... I think. I know. Sorry. Go on. Because I, I, this is. I been thinking about this over the weekend because i've been As watching do, yeah. i've been watching no i've been watching films that he's in oh well. ian mcshane oh what oh, wow do you like mcshane oh voice? what a voice Love to what a voice that man has got he he pays i've been he, watching he john does. wick i've been watching i've watched three of the four john wicks over the last couple of weeks and his voice in he's that in john wick is he jonathan wick they call him J- yeah, jonathan okay. wick i can't even do his voice that's how good it is okay. there's no way of actually and I'm pretty sure in the eighties, didn't he introduce um and I've completely lost them Grace Jones. Didn't he introduce Grace Jones in the music video? Ladies and gentlemen. Grace Jones. His voice is unbelievable. Okay. It's unbelievable. It's it. smoother than the, the leather jacket he used to wear in Love Joy. Yeah, I didn't expect Love Joy <laughs> to be thrown in. I didn't, but fair play. It's a great it's High praise honestly, indeed. It's left his field. voice is unbelievable. Left field. That, I think people that's why people Give him roles. It's not because of the way he looks. Clearly, it's his voice. It's unbelievable. We have to get that voice, and like that is one for AI. Okay. It has to live forever, okay. like James Earl Jones's voice. Yeah, I get it. Get it has voice. to live forever. Okay, Sam. Well, I was going to say James Earl Jones, but as I was thinking about it, there's a there's a a guy who's not a celebrity, but he's uh, he's a he's an umpire at Wimbledon. I'm sure he does the other circuits as well, but. I think he was Spanish, but he had the deepest, dare I say it, sexiest voice I've ever mm. heard. And it was just this, like... You can't say it. It's fine. Fif, fif, Fifteen love. And every time he said it, it was like, what are those things called mm. on YouTube? Like, is it ASDMR? What are those things? ASMR. ASMR. Yeah, it was like that. And he was going, 30 love. But it it, like, what, wouldn't that be annoying gone, if you want a cup of tea and you just have to go, 15 love? I no yeah, one knows. Got more, more has he got more... I don't know, because Sam just does scores. Sugar well, there was one bit he milk. said where something happened and he had to explain and he went, no, no, you cannot do that. And then he paused and then he said, in tennis. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I tell well. you who's got a brilliant voice. I like that. Um, and again, I'm, I, you See, don't... I was going to go Antonio Banderas. Yeah. He's, 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 he's got quite a cool voice, hasn't he? His regular... Oh, Owen Wilson as well. Owen Wilson's got such a distinct... Wow. Hasn't he? Such wow. a distinct, of slow, relaxing wow. voice that I think I'd just talk to myself. To I'd say he's got an amazing song. voice, and I'm sure you'll, 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 you know this one as well. Matt Berry. Yeah. Matt oh, Berry yeah. is unbelievable. Is you know Matt Berry. Nick Berry's voice? No, Nick no. Berry's you, know, Matt, you, mu- you must know Matt oh. Berry, this dude here. Stop, There's a oh, video he's, done, he's done about the, the Cambridge Oxford boat. Is it him? If you haven't seen that it, close, yeah, yeah, yeah. looked like him. To be fair. Yeah, he's he honestly oh, is, and and crazy. there's a and there's a fellow who does an impression of him, and even like the impression is almost better because yeah. Yeah. because it it overdoes everything he says, so it's yeah. even better. It's like <laughs> oh, he read it's... out Prince William's autobiography, didn't he? He read out a bit of that in his in Matt Berry's voice, and it's have just... you. Gold. Have you ever seen Toast when he's having to do the the porn <laughs> scene with the other fella, and he's doing a voiceover? He's doing a voiceover. Two fellas are doing a voiceover for a porn scene, it's and it's unbelievable. They're just like, oh, 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 oh. it's just horrible, <laughs> but at the same time, amazing. Okay. What's the, the other fella's called Ray something, and it's just I'll I'll find it for you. You'll absolutely love it, Baz. You'll love it. It sounds great. It is on that porno note. It's cheered up a little bit. Let's uh, let's leave it there. Let's leave Big it finish. there and let's hope when we... Well, what a finish, yeah. Um, great climax to the show. Let's uh, hope when we record this next Monday we are talking about a victory for Everton down in the smoke. Down a big smoke, and, you know. and if not, at least talking to Dave Vitti. That'd yeah. be that'd be a, a, yeah. you know. that'd be a victory in itself, wouldn't it? It would a vitty in itself. It mm. would. A oh, vitty. Oh, someone I, I was speaking to someone over the weekend. They went, "Oh, I love that podcast you do with the the Toffee TV lads and Dave McVitty." <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Let's That's hope voice. he is back. Mm. Let's hope he is back there next you. week. Sam, thank you very much, top man. Thanks, for nice saying. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, give it five star ratings, do all of that stuff, and we will see you later. Bye.